Okay, JB, it looks like uh, we have some modifications that have been underway for the 38 Zephyr. Why don't you yes. explain what's going on here? Well, again, we, we've uh, finally got all our parts and pieces together. We had to wait to send some stuff back and, and, uh, and then that came back again. So it takes time, unfortunately, but we're back on track. And this is the uh, typical modification, uh, more of a hot rod type of a, a way of doing this. And what you do is you take, if you notice these, this group of leaves right here, yeah, that I'm used to be up that. here. Oh. All right, but that in effect creates a very stiff spring. When you, when you reverse the eyelets, and that's what we did here, we went down to the spring shop, the eyelets used to go the other direction. Okay. So now they're going this way, which in, in turn allows the car to settle down. We take out the leaves so it's not as stiffly sprung. These cars were all overdone in terms of stiffness. They didn't need to be that stiff. Right. Um, but the roads were awful and potholes were common. And now we don't have that. We have a situation where we would like the car to ride a little nicer, a little softer, and we would like the car to sit down a little bit, because right. uh, just for appearance sake, but also the handling improves when a car sits down further. It's not yeah. just for- The center of gravity drops a little exactly. bit. Exactly, so the okay. car goes around a corner better than it did if it was sticking up in the air. Sure, okay. And there's a relationship between the front and rear you have to consider as well. Okay. Uh, Walker calls cars that are too jacked up in the back to the, uh, I can't tell you what it tells, but <laughs> if you jack it up in the front, it's called the gasser look. Oh, right, yep. All right. Uh, well, actually, if they're jacked up in the back, he calls it a stink bug, okay? Because if you think about a stink bug, okay. well, you get the picture. Uh, yeah. The point is that the car should sit almost exactly level. It should sit down and have a tiny bit of bias that the front is just a tiny bit lower than the rear, mm -hmm. okay? That's hard to achieve unless you've done it a lot. Yeah. Um, because once you do all this work, it's gonna sit where it sits. Right. These guys have been doing it for 30 years, so they, they know, know where it's going to go. They know how many springs to take out, and how many to move, right? Uh, and how to achieve that result. But we also had to modify the eyelets here, as you notice, because this uh, bracket, which relates to the rear end, is tied to the spring. Right. Okay. So it this has to is go a new on made exactly bracket. Exactly in the right angle. Exactly. To hold very it very in. precise. All this has to be done with a lot of care, and you're, you're really taking things from one era and grafting them onto another era, so it's even more complicated than it would seem. Obviously, we don't want to just create a brand new spring when the car came with a spring. Yeah, and it's great to, even though you've gone to a nine inch rear and you're adding brand new wheel and brake components, to at least to continue to find a way to use the original spring is really cool. Exactly, the, the more things that you can that you can keep, the more original its character remains. Yep. And there are a lot of things that just don't need re replacing. In fact, I see it way too much of that, where they just go in and cut the entire run bottom end of the car out, and when half of it was still usable. Right. So it doesn't make any sense to replace things that are already correct. Yeah. But there's this tendency to kind of want to start all over. Yeah. And um, in some cases, it makes sense. In quite a number of cases, it just doesn't make any sense at all. Gotcha. Okay, but you so have to have a really intense understanding of the geometry of rear ends and front ends in order to accomplish this sort of thing and maintain the drivability of the car. Remember, too, that this rear axle housing has to be the same width as a stock. So we had to order this cut to an exact dimension because right. when we put the wheels on it and the tires, we have to understand that that skirt is sitting right beyond that tire. Yeah, that's so, a tight clearance, isn't it? Exactly. So it, it, as this rear end goes up and down, it, it, it changes its relationship to the, to the skirt. So if it if it get we get too close to it, it'll actually hit the skirt. Okay. Of course, we can't have that. So this is about to go under the car and get right. installed. Is that right? right? Well, firstly, we'll, we'll uh, paint it. Uh, he's got a couple little things to do. Okay. If you notice over here, we have a vent that's been added to the to All the right. rear end so that uh, you get the gases out of it. Sure, okay. And that'll be modified slightly also, but you can see the, the, the this bracket and the, the ladder bars, which we don't have right in front of us, are the thing that controls the, the rear end, allows it to pivot, yeah. but not to go uh, fore and aft, gotcha. out of sync with the, of the automobile. So yeah. really important for this thing to be able to roll up and over uh, undulations in the roads and bumps and dips 
Yep. Uh, but at the same time, he has to maintain control. So it's a very sophisticated part of the car, which probably the most sophisticated part of any automobile is is the uh, suspension. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be mindful of that. Uh, and the rear end is particularly uh, complicated because we've changed a lot of the components, but we're going to keep the spring that was right. uh, came with the car. Okay, now we're standing in front of the 38 Zephyr that's been painted. Right. What's the next step here? Well, we've got to start addressing the firewall. We're making a lot of headway with the engine. The transmission is 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 ready to be mo bolted to the back of the uh, the new engine. Once it gets here, we we had some difficulty finding uh, piston rings uh, for the engine because it has aluminum pistons. Right. And our builder does not want to put old funky rings in it for obvious reasons. A lot of people would do that because they just don't care or they just want to get the motor out of there. Uh, our engine builder doesn't think like that, so mercifully. But he found uh, some some piston rings out of an Onan generator, of all things. They're really? exactly the right size that we need. So Interesting. those have been ordered and should be in hand very shortly. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we got to get a home for the engine. Right. And that's the engine compartment. Now, there's a lot of people fall down around about this time. Okay. And they spend a lot of time trying to get rid of all the holes here. And, fully uh, half or more of these holes are not going to be reused, there's no way to fix a hole other than to get rid of it, okay? <laughs> Just make it go away. Right. And you can do that a number of ways. You can weld panels in here and do all that business. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's kind of a long way home. So okay. what we decided to do, and I can show you over here on this 39, okay. exactly what our, uh, our method of and you notice wow, the, you notice the huge difference. We need, a, we need a grommet right there for that, that cable coming through the firewall. Right. But you notice how much cleaner everything oh, is? Oh, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, very simple. But, you know, now when you look at the engine compartment, you see the engine. You don't see the messy firewall with sure. holes and things that have make no sense whatsoever. Right. So that's what we're going to do on this one. Now, we're going to take a little bit different tack with this car. Okay. And then we're going to do uh, uh, matte black instead of uh, the color of the car. Okay. The, the problem that you have is the engine doesn't get as much attention as the ex at the outside of the car, so it tends to get dirty and stay dirty. Okay. And um, so to address that, what we decided to do is make it uh, matte black, mm -hmm. so that it won't show dust quite as easily. But we'll get rid of all this these millions of, of holes that are not going to be used any longer. Sure. So we're going to do we're going to do the inside with matte black. And then we're going to build a matte black firewall cover, let's call it. Okay. And then install that. And then if we still have some things that need to go through the firewall, uh, they can certainly do that. But we, it, you know, we're going to plan it. As you saw in this one, all we have is the one coming through the yeah. through the firewall. It's just yeah. a lot cleaner look. It is. It looks great. Okay. Good so design is always go put the. You can put all the good design in the same test. Do you notice it when you see it? And the answer is, if the answer is no, it means it's good design. Yeah. Because it's supposed to flow, it's not supposed to stand up and say, hi, hi, here I am. And even though, not that it needs it, but I, I assume it's adding that extra panel here is actually gonna give it a tiny bit more structure and strength too. Well, it does a couple of things. It stops yeah. any migration of engine heat Okay. Into the into the interior of the car, which is a big problem. Well, with sure, heat cars. is a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a million holes in the firewall, and you got this glowing hot thing here. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, absolutely, uh, you can put heat liners on the inside, and that helps as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, that doesn't address the cosmetic problem that we have here. Right. So we're going to do both. Aluminum is a, a really good transmitter. Uh, of heat, and, and in this case, the heat will be transferred. It'll serve as a shield, I guess. It's a heat shield, essentially, yeah. yeah. Whereas um, just covering everything up with Bondo or something really would do absolutely yeah. no good. Sure. And we're creating an interstitial space between the two metal mm -hmm. parts so we can integrate some sound deadening in there without yep. a whole lot of trouble. Um, mm -hmm. And then we got a really really good uh, barrier from heat making its way into the cockpit of the car. Wow, that's a great idea. The other great thing about this car, of course, is it go right back. It has no what? It has the Calvet Delete. Thank you. <laughs> the, the very rare Calvet Delete, delete feature. Yeah. 
<laughs> which is, I mean, I did, we just had a big rain here the other day and my 38, I had to run out there. The whole car is protected except for the cowl van. Right. So if it rains really hard, that water's going to run right, in the right car. inside the car. You yeah. can't stop it. The, yeah. the seals they have are, are pathetically in, yeah. uh, bad and the best thing to do is just get rid of it. Yeah. It doesn't have any place in a modern it totally era. makes sense. Yep. So once we get the a home for the engine, um, cleaned up and spruced up. We're still going to use the throttle linkage, probably. Yep. So that'll that'll remain, but everything else is pretty much going to get gonna, covered. It's going to look really clean. Exactly. It's gonna look great. That's the whole plan, and and also, not just to add another feature to it, because what we're doing is we're reducing the number of labor operations sure. that are required. Yeah. Okay. We already have a pattern of that, so yeah. we're going to take that that time that we invested in that car and move it over here so that the customer is not having to pay for it. It's one of those uh, rare cases where the aesthetics and the practical actually are on the same team. They often are a okay. lot more than you'd imagine. All right. um, and this car is so incredibly devoid of weak spots when it comes to that. that mm -hmm. When you see a weak spot like the in, like the firewall, yeah. immediately jump to it and you just say, you just bang your head and say, God, why didn't, why didn't they take care of that? Well, it's not that easy. This is a complicated piece. Right. Uh, we have to still deal with the throttle linkage and some other things. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that not that, sure. that easy, but it certainly does look, make the car look finished. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay.